G'day and welcome to the build series, uh, episode one. We're about to kick off. Uh, you're going to watch me hopefully have a crack at building this uh, van behind me. Um, unfortunately, I caught a spicy cough this week, so I'm in uh, COVID isolation at the moment, which um, hasn't helped with progress a huge amount and also isn't helping with the voice. So hopefully you can hear me. Uh, hopefully I'm making sense. Uh, I'm still a little bit delirious here and there, but uh, you'd have to be delirious to take on a project like this anyway, right? So... <laughs> Um, anyway, I reckon we jump in. I'm just going to do this episode. is just going to be a bit of a walk around in the van and show you where it's at. Uh, it's not quite finished. You can probably see a block of wood there propping the roof up. Um, so I've got to get some gas struts and a few other bits and pieces done. But um, she's nearly, she's nearly there. Um, so yeah, we'll do a bit of a walk around. I'll show you the componentry, a bit about the design, why I built it, etc. Uh, and then we'll launch into episode two next week, which will be the um, start of the build series in earnest, where we. Uh, chuck some steel together and get going uh she's a 20 part series so stay tuned over the next 20 weeks hopefully you'll uh, get to see this thing transform from a pile of steel on the floor up to what it is today and beyond um, it's pretty exciting so jump straight in Cheers. Ah, so design philosophy, what was I trying to achieve here? Uh, I wanted a capable off-road unit, so I needed some clearance uh, and want some decent suspension um, so I could drag it down some goat tracks occasionally and get away from civilization. Uh, I wanted to go off-grid for long periods as well, so I needed heaps of solar, heaps of battery and lots of water um, storage potential. Um, I wanted it to be pretty compact, lightweight, um, easy to tow. I didn't want to be dragging an anchor around with me, um, so it's quite often with the DIY builds people struggle to keep the weight down but I think I've managed to achieve that I'll talk a bit about that later on uh, durable obviously uh, went with a pretty solid steel chassis three mil thick um, and uh, there's no timber in the construction at all it's all composite materials so hopefully it lasts longer than I do um, I needed it to be uh, within a good budget, <laughs> well priced, and also a quick turnaround. Like I, when I was searching in the market for the Aussie made hybrids that I was interested in of this size or a little bit bigger, prices were just going out of control. Uh, COVID tax coming in and you know Chinese parts import getting imported was difficult. So um, the prices were just going up and up and up and up. And obviously people can't travel, so they're buying caravans, which drives the price up as well. Uh, also. I was looking at a minimum 12 on some of the models, mostly 18 to 24 months turnaround when I started building this and I just did not want to wait that long. I want to start to get out and having a bit of an adventure after Melbourne COVID lockdowns. Um, easy and quick to set up was important for me as well. I didn't want to be spending hours at campsites uh, mucking around with annexes and and trying to level vans up on chocks and all that sort of stuff. So um, I think I've achieved that as well. It's just a couple of clips and a roof pops open and a and a pretty quick awning set up. So uh, I should be sitting in a chair with a beer oh, within five minutes, but we'll test it out later in the series. You'll be able to see that. Um, outdoor living and cooking was a uh, priority. I didn't want to have a kitchen inside. I um, wanted it to be a simple, lightweight kitchen that I could access from outside and do all of my outdoor cooking um, from out there. Um, the inside, I just wanted it to be minimal. I uh, did want an ensuite and toilet um, with the toilets. I went with a composting toilet, it's an airhead. You'll see that later on in the series as well. Uh, needed to be a queen size bed um, and I wanted somewhere to sit in there in case it's howling or there's mosquito swarms hitting me um, outside that I could escape and sit down so there's a small bench seat in there 
So, but yeah, but mainly uh, outdoor for living and uh, cooking, indoor just for sleeping and washing is really what it comes down to. But that's it around design philosophy. Yeah, so the overall specs, uh, it's about 5.4 metres long. That's from the spare on the bumper bar all the way through to the DA35 at the front. So it's fairly short, uh, but that came into the design philosophy around just trying to keep the weight down. Uh, I'm pretty happy with where it's ended up. I think it's got, I've got heaps of space for what I need to do with that length. Um, it's turned out quite well. Uh, it's about two metres width. Um, that's not including the awning there above my head. It's um, uh, wall to wall is about two metres. So I can get away with the standard mirrors on the Ranger. Um, they see down the side clear as day so I don't need to go upgrade stand and put wider mirrors on. Um, the two meters was really just a factor of wanting a similar wheel track to the um, Ranger. Um, it's a little bit wider than the Ranger now but it's pretty close uh, so they will run within the Ranger um, tracks which is good. Um, and 2.4 meters high that's a standard ride height it sits at about 2.4 which was um, really just a determination of what I can fit under that roller door. Um, the suspension is uh, rated to 2.8 tonnes, but I'm going to set the ATM of the van at 2,400, 2.4 tonnes. That keeps me within the load rating on the wheels and tyres um, and uh, gives me heaps of payload as well, so that's where it ended up. Um, yeah, so that's it, but that's the basics of uh, the overall specs and that. We'll jump on to the next bit. So you're probably wondering why I didn't talk about the tear weight in that last little segment. It's because I'm going to do a bit of giveaway. It's giveaway time. I want you guys to guess the weight. Tell me what you think she weighs. Uh, the person who gets to the closest uh, on the kilograms uh, will be the winner. And the winner is going to receive a coupling weight scale from CoupleMate. Um, yeah, these guys have come on board. I use them quite a bit through the build, actually. I bought the DA35 and a few other bits and pieces off them. Uh, they're going to supply the lucky winner with one of these. They're quite a useful little tool. I bought one of those from, for the build as well. Um, chuck it underneath the hitch and uh, gives you an idea of your table weight. Yeah, so comment below. Kilograms, nearest kilogram wins. Uh, I'll let it run for a few weeks and then we'll be in touch to the lucky winner. Good luck. Yeah, so a bit on the running gear. Uh, I've got 150 by 50 mil chassis. It's Duragel, three mil thick. Um, that's the main rails and some of the cross members. And then uh, there's elsewhere in the build, there's 50 by 50. So she's fairly strong. Um, haven't obviously tested it out yet, but I reckon that'll go pretty well. Got a certified welder to come in and do all the final welds. I tacked it all together, set it all out, tacked it all together, got it to its final shape and you know true and square and everything else. And then he came and smashed it all with the with the proper welds, um, which was good. So I got a fair bit of strength there. I'm pretty happy with that. I uh, got a DA35 up front to tow it along with. Never used one of those before. Uh, they get pretty good reviews. It's the V3 model with integrated handbrake. Um, looking forward to testing that out over time. But uh, yeah, nice bit of kit in my opinion. Uh, the suspension's a tough ride, Teco. Um, airbag suspension, so it's uh, trailing arms, swing arms with uh, airbags and shockers, double shocks on each side. Uh, that's rated to 2.8 tonnes, actually, that bit of kit. Um, so I've gone a bit overs there, I guess. But um, I did like the the, uh, the option of having a fairly light van and it's got a lot of payload. So when there's not much gear in there, I didn't want to bounce it all down the road on springs. Um, the airbags can just accommodate whether I've got a light load or a, or a heavy load. Um, and I also really like the idea of turning up to site and levelling the van with a little button um, rather than driving it up on shocks. So that's why I went with Tough Ride. Uh, I'll test that out over time as well and see that in, in due course. Uh, the wheels, I've uh, just got some Steel Sun Rages uh, with a decent rating on them and some um, <clears throat> Hankook AT2s as well. They're a uh, nice tyre. I've got the option of running two spares on the rear, so my um, bumper bar uh, spare tyre mounts um can come off and on and um i'll just run one most of the time but I'll, I'll chuck a second on for the longer for the longer trips as well um when i need to get a bit more remote uh, and i can balance the weight out as well there's a lot of weight to be hanging off a bumper bar so uh, i'll just run with one typically and and when i can balance that weight out i'll run two um what else that's probably it in the running gear sense um we'll jump on to the next bit Quick run through on the plumbing. I've got a, um, I've got three tanks. Two of them are 140 liters that are manifolded together. Uh, that's for all the shower and kitchen, all that sort of water, um, basically for washing. Uh, and I've got another 45 liter tank, which is just filtered drinking water. Uh, they've both got 
each of those setups has got its own dedicated pump um, and obviously the filtered water system's got its own dedicated filter as well. I want to be able to get to a point where I can pull from a creek into the main tanks and then run it through the filters as well and put it through for drinking water if needed later on. Um, but I've got them all segregated, all valved, so I can access one or, one or more of those tanks at any one time. I can shift water around as well to just redistribute weight underneath. That was the plan anyway. I've got a 45 litre grey water tank as well. It's the same tank as the um, as the filtered water tank, same size, dimensions, etc. It just sits up the front. I've just got all the waste running through that and um, that uh, is really just to get me into the national parks when I need to, um, to do um, that um, self-contained camping that you sometimes need to do. Uh, what else have I got going on? I put a composting toilet. So I've got an airhead composting toilet in the ensuite. Um, I like the idea of those. Gets you very, very little water usage or no water usage requirement. Um, the solids tank can last quite a while and then you just, um, and, the, and the liquids are separated out so I can just empty those as needed. Uh, showers, there's a shower in that ensuite as well. The shower's uh, connected to a six litre hot water unit. It's an OzJ 12 volt. I cover that around uh, episode six or seven, I think it is, um, the installation of that. Nice little unit, haven't tested it out yet, but they get pretty good reviews, so I'm looking forward to having given that a crack. Uh, that shower unit inside in my ensuite also unplugs and comes around outside and connects us to an external shower point that I've got on the outside of the van. Will be useful for the times when I want to shower outside or run, um, you know, I've got hot water there or cold water there, I can wash things down with that outlet as well. I've also got two um, taps on the outside uh, one of the taps operates as a fill point for the tanks, so bottom fill point for the main tanks. Uh, the other tap operates as an outlet point for when I turn the pumps on, I can run water out there to fill a bucket or whatever. But it also, when you click onto that with town pressure, it pre repressurizes the system in the other direction, so I can put town pressure through the whole thing. Jump on the next bit. What a thing of beauty. This is the uh, power panel. Uh, I'm not going to take credit for this. I spec'd it with what I wanted, but uh, I got um, my local Sparky, who does a bit of caravan work, to pull it together for me. That's Salt Electrical. Uh, yeah, it's a masterpiece, and uh, I'd be kidding myself if I ever thought I'd get anywhere near as good as this. Um, I've pulled off a few of the covers, so you won't see any of that wiring. There's um, conduit covers that go in front of that, make it look even neater again, but I'm just trying to access a few things to wire it up. Um, yeah, so I'll just quickly run through this so you get a bit of an idea. It's a 3000 volt amp multi plus two charger inverter. Nice bit of gear. I'm not going to go into detail on that. About episode 17, I think I go through all of this stuff. Um, so stay tuned for that later on in the, in the series. Three solar controllers. Um, I've got three 310 watt solar panels to go on the roof. Um, two of them will be connected to that one. One of them will be connected to that one. And this one will be for a solar blanket external input. I'm uh, just trying to eliminate shade issues, uh, stopping me from getting charged through the panel. So it was pretty much the same price to get three smaller units as it was to get one really big one. So I thought, uh, let's try and eliminate a bit of a shading issue. I'm so heavily reliant on having enough charge on this um, for hot water and for cooking uh, that I need to make sure I'm topping that battery up routinely. Uh, smart charger from the car, so it's a 30 amp uh, DC DC charger. And then here I've got a servo control unit and I've got a tank input. I've got uh, Cymarine uh, level sensors, pressure transducers that are connected to my tanks. They'll run back to this point here and then they'll feed a display on my servo unit, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, this uh, Lynx power in system just distributes power and the panel. I've just got one of those off because I've got to tap into it uh, with a bit of stuff later on. Um, what else? There's a couple of breakers for the solar on the rooftop and also the multi plus input and output there. Also got here a Makita charger. I run Makita gear, so I have a battery operated chainsaw and uh, the, then the drills for using around camp, um, putting pegs in and lifting up and down um, steadies and, and also the Boss jockey wheel. <clears throat> uh, all that's on Makita gear. So I've got a Makita brought out a 12 volt one. You can plug into your Siggy lighter on your car actually. Um, so that'll just run back to um, my switchboard here. This is going to be the switchboard for the storage area in here. Um, these things, are, when you try and add up all the switches and all the fuses and all that gear um, and try and make one of these independently, uh, I just figure it actually works out cheaper and more efficient just to buy the box. These are a couple hundred bucks. You get all these um, Siggy lighter inputs and um, USB outlets and and um, 
Uh, there's a couple of Anderson plugs and it's all fused and it's neat. So I'm going to put this one in here. That'll control, um, it'll be power to the fridge, power to the hottie, power to a heap of lights, um, a few other bits and pieces. I'll just mount this somewhere in here and um, simplify the whole thing for me. Um, that's probably it on the panel side of things. Oh, the battery. Yeah, tucked in under there. You can just see it. 489 amp hours of lithium battery. Uh, it's a... It's a thing to behold, but that's about it. Uh, a real quick run through of the kitchen area. So I went with an outdoor style kitchen. Uh, a couple of the hybrid brands out there have done something similar. I really like the design for its simplicity and simplicity typically means uh, less weight. Uh, a lot of the hybrids with the outdoor cooking have got big slide out contraptions that you know fold around and sit up against the side of the van and they're all fantastic but I reckon they're a bit complicated for a DIYer but also uh, they'd weigh a bit and I was really trying to keep weight down and I think I've achieved the, that simplicity and weight um, offset um, as a consequence of what I've done here. Obviously, that bit of wood's optional. It won't be coming on trips. Uh, I've got the gas struts turning up today. Actually, I've got to fit those this weekend. Um, yeah, so this is basically it. I've got induction cooking. There's a 2,000 and a 1,500-watt induction cooker there. Never used one of these, actually. Yet to use this one. Um, it'll be a bit of an experiment for me, but um, seems to be all the rage. We'll give it a go. Got a bit of a draw. Very simple um, slide-out crate there just to hold pots and pans i've got to put some shelving up here that's going to be um uh, bowls and cups and saucers and utensils over here i've got a 12 volt uh road chef big bertha oven to go in uh, i've got to mount that this weekend as well very controversial i know but i got a microwave uh, i like the idea of the functionality of being able to reheat leftovers from last night quickly on the move and when i'm doing some touring and also, I like the idea of being able to defrost um, meat or whatever quickly for um, cooking when you turn up late at camp. Uh, filtered water, it's a dedicated filtered water pump and tank running through to this outlet here and then double sink. Um, so it's fairly clean, fairly neat, uh, functional, not sure, but we'll, we'll road test that over time and we'll figure that out. Um, this door folds down becomes a workbench and um so i've got no obviously much space here to be chopping stuff up so i'll put a bit of stainless sheet on here thin stainless sheet and that'll be my workbench um, for outside need a bit of stainless rope on here to hold it when it drops down um and then just pantry basically it's not not a huge amount of space in there but it's just a very simple system of um, wire um shelving and i'll be using these sort of clear top canvas bags um mainly to, to put food in and then you can pull those out sit them down here and and um access the stuff that's in them eventually i do have plans of cutting a hole in that wall and having a drawer that slides through into the storage area beside it um and uh creating a bit more pantry space but that'll be for later on i'll actually just road test this and see if i've got enough storage here for my needs as it is if not we can put something in um, down the track uh there's going to be a false floor that goes in there just to cover up all the pumps and all the wiring and all the waste that's in under there need to be still accessible so i'm just going to put a false floor in there and that'll come out when i need to access that stuff um but yeah we just move more storage down there that's basically it um ready to roll on to the next thing Uh, yeah, just a bit on the storage and internal layout. So obviously that uh, whole cavity there is underneath the mattress, which I'll take you inside and show you in a sec. Uh, that's all storage, big area, you know, 1.8 wide, one and a half long, and <clears throat> probably over a metre high. Lots of storage, but conscious is behind the um, the wheels. Um, so any weight I put there is going to affect ball weight drastically. Um, so I need to balance off what I put in that section with what I put in this front box. Um, Obviously, got this custom-made front box. I've got to put some drawers in here. I'm going to build a drawer unit just out of ply um, that slides out, and um, that'll and then there'll be a cavity above that for other storage. Uh, ultimately, this box was to end that storage area we designed around getting an inflatable boat that folds down into a rucksack that goes in there just behind the um, wheel line and the outboard motor to go in on top of the draw unit I put in here. So 40 kilo roughly outboard motor, 40 kilo roughly um, boat uh, to go in the back and they should balance each other out reasonably well. Um, but yeah, lots of storage in there, still a bit of work to do. Um, it's firewood up on top or 
whatever, I'm not really sure yet, just um, ground mats and other things just roped down onto the top there is the plan. Uh, take you around, this is the fridge slide. Uh, I got a kick ass fridge slide, it's the largest one they do that accommodates their 95 litre fridge. Um, yeah, that slides out obviously to here. I talked, I showed you the storage in there earlier. That's the kitchen storage for a few pots and pans in the pantry over there. Uh, internal layout, um, still a bit of work to do in here. It's not finished, but um, you'll get the gist when I show you around. So you come up into here, uh, mattress goes up in there, and um, don't know what I'm going to do up there yet. That's just a blank space. Can put more storage. I'm not really sure. Obviously, the lid, the lid is closed. Um, there'd be a bit more headroom in here than there is now. This is the fridge slide again from the inside. Uh, I'm going to put in a bench seat here. And the base of the seat will be uh, able to open so you can access down into the fridge uh, from inside the van, which will be useful. <clears throat> I'm going to put a diesel heater there and maybe some other stuff. I'm not sure yet. Um, but all that will be accessible storage, I guess you'd call it, from inside the van. Uh, I've got to put a bit of fiberglass over that um, to finish that off. Or maybe the bench seat will just cover it. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I've got drawers down in here. Again, just those crates that um, will hold clothes and shoes and things like that. Um, and then there's a bit of storage in the in the toilet as well. I'll just put the light on. Yeah, so in the storage area in here is just, I've got these little shelves, little magnets on them that hold them closed. Um, uh, there's a shelving unit that goes behind that. It's probably about 150 mil deep, uh, big enough to accommodate toilet rolls and uh, coir and toiletries and stuff like that. Still a bit of work to do in here as well. Got to finish the edges and trims in there. Um, got to finish these. Got to cover some, put some trims over that. Um, got to put a little step in here that you step up on to get up onto the mattress to finish that off as well. But yeah, that's roughly it. I reckon we'll call it there on the episode. Thanks for dialing in and uh, stay tuned for the next 20 weeks, roughly through to the end of the year where you watch me build this thing all the way through. Um, I would need to caveat this too, I haven't said it already, but uh, I'm no expert. You may have already established this. I just had a crack. I like having a crack at this sort of stuff and I've had a bit of fun building this. The way I've done it, it's not necessarily the right way to do it, but might give you some ideas to uh, take on your own project of uh, in a similar ilk. Anyway, we'll call it there. Um, make sure you comment below with what you think this thing weighs to win that wonderful little prize from earlier. And uh, yeah, dial in next week for um, where we kick off in earnest and start playing with some steel, cutting and welding and grinding and doing all that sort of good stuff. Cheerio for now.